Initially, there were no plans for Shalimar to be a real group, but fate had other plans when their debut single became a hit on several music charts, including dance, R&B, and pop. Despite some early changes in their lineup, Shalimar's classic formation enjoyed a significant period of triumph. However, internal conflicts among the members in their record label eventually caused their downfall. Join us as we delve into the tumultuous history of Shalimar and their current activities. Be sure to give the video a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on in-depth explorations of legendary old-school bands and musicians. The trio that became a fan favorite was composed of Howard Hewitt, Jody Watley, and Jeffrey Daniels. Jeffrey was fortunate enough to have grown up in Los Angeles, positioning him perfectly for his future musical endeavors. As a passionate dancer, one of his aspirations was to feature his skills on a fresh musical variety program that made its debut in the early 70s called Soul Train. Jody, who was born in Chicago, shared the same ambition of appearing on the show, and Destiny played its part when her family moved to Los Angeles. Both found themselves on the iconic program simultaneously and would later become collaborators both personally and professionally. In the meantime, Soul Train's Don Cornelius and booking agent Dick Griffey saw an opportunity to capitalize on the show's popularity by creating a record label, which became known as Soul Train Records. According to Shalimar's Unsung episode, an independent producer presented a track to the label, and Dick and Don agreed to release it. However, controversy later arose over who was truly responsible for not only releasing the song, but also forming Shalimar as a group. Simon Toussaint, a British man of French and Moroccan descent, is credited as the producer of the track and is said to have drawn on his Middle Eastern heritage to come up with the group's name. On the other hand, Ian Dewhurst, another producer, claimed that the song was his idea and that he came up with the group's name as a tribute to a female vocal group from the 1960s. He also claimed to have worked on the song with Simon, but received no credit. Nevertheless, a group of studio musicians was assembled to record the track Uptown Festival Part 1, which was a medley of several Motown classics sung over a 70s disco beat. After the song became a hit, Simone formed an actual group to perform it and record more material, which resulted in their first official album of the same name in 1977. The lead singer was Gary Mumford, one of the session singers, and the other two members were Jeffrey Daniels and Jody Watley. Despite the success, Don Cornelius decided to step away from the record label and focus on his TV show. The producers went on to buy him out and create a new name for the label, Solar, which stood for Sound of Los Angeles Records. Gerald Brown ultimately replaced Gary as the lead singer, and the trio released their second album titled Disco Gardens in 1978, featuring the hit Take That to the Bank. Unfortunately, Gerald left the group because the money they were expecting after their national tour for the aforementioned album was nowhere to be found, and he didn't even have a contract with Shalimar. This made it easy for the producers to get away with not paying them. As a result of Gerald's departure, the lead singer position in Shalimar became vacant and was eventually filled by Howard Hewitt, who is now a beloved figure among the group's fans. Howard, who was born and raised in Akron, Ohio, discovered his singing talent at a young age of around 10 and later joined his siblings in their own group, the Hewitt Singers, at the age of 20. With his sights set on Los Angeles, Howard left Ohio and eventually crossed paths with Jeffrey and Jody when they saw him perform with his group at a local nightclub that Soul Train dancers frequented. After Gerald left the group, Howard was in a meeting with a producer at the Motown office when Jeffrey called him and offered him the opportunity to become the new lead singer for Shalimar. It just so happened that Solar Records' office was located in the same building. Howard impressed them with his performance and later secured his place in the group's impressive history. In 1979, Shalimar released their next project, titled Big Fun, which included their most successful hit, The Second Time Around, and became their first album to receive a gold certification. The group's chemistry was undeniable and led to their success. However, this chemistry did not carry over offstage. In their unsung episode, Jody mentioned that she and Howard did not get along initially, resulting in a lack of respect between the two. Additionally, Jody and Jeffrey's romantic relationship ended around this time, which caused further tension among the group members. Furthermore, issues with their label began to emerge as Dick's disrespect for Jody and Jeffrey, whom he only viewed as dancers and backup for Howard, became more apparent. 
With the arrival of the early 80s, the disco music trend had worn out its welcome, and people were ready for something new. Shalimar, who had been riding the disco wave, knew they had to switch things up, which led to the release of their more soulful album, Three for Love. This fourth album, released in 1980, went gold thanks to the song, This is for the Lover and You. According to Jeffrey, the group's next two albums were recorded at the same time, but served different purposes. Go For It, released in 1981, was the final album that Solar owed to their distributor, RCA, and received limited promotion, with only one single, Sweeter As The Days Go By. However, the other album more than made up for it. Friends, which released the following year, was a huge success, going gold in the US, platinum in Britain, and yielding four singles, including the top 10 R&B hit, A Night To Remember. The members of Shalimar felt that another change was necessary, this time in their style. They were heavily influenced by the new wave of British pop acts that were emerging at the time, and their popularity in the UK was on the rise. Jeffrey took a solo trip to the UK to showcase his body pop and dance skills on the popular BBC music program, Top of the Pops. Jody and Howard were not present as Jody was on maternity leave and Howard was dealing with the end of his marriage. It was during this performance that Jeffrey introduced a new dance move called the backslide, which would later be renamed the moonwalk by none other than Michael Jackson. Nonetheless, this trip showcased that the group's increasing record sales in the UK were a clear indication of how much the Brits love Shalimar. After achieving success with chart-topping hits and tours worldwide, the trio expected to see a reflection of their hard work in their bank accounts, but this was not the case. Consequently, this led to the beginning of the end for the group. Despite this, they continued to work on their next album, The Look, which was released in 1983. Just before its release, tensions between Jody and Howard came to a head during a video shoot for the lead single, Dead Giveaway, in the UK. Their confrontation resulted in Jody quitting the group on the spot, but after threats of a lawsuit, the video was completed on schedule with the participation of all members. The departure of Jody and Jeffrey occurred before the album's release, but Dick was determined to keep the Shalimar legacy alive and added new members to the group. Despite the fresh faces, the underlying tension between the members remained unchanged. Mickey Free and Delisa Davis were brought in to replace Jeffrey and Jody, and the group enjoyed renewed success when their song Dancing in the Sheets made it to the top 20 on the pop charts as part of the Footloose soundtrack. Another soundtrack, Don't Get Stopped in Beverly Hills, for the film Beverly Hills Cop, brought the group even greater success and earned them a Grammy for Best Album of Original Score Written for a Motion Picture or Television Special. Both of these songs were featured on Shalimar's next album, The Gold Certified Heartbreak, which was released in 1984. Howard soon felt as though he had achieved everything he could with Shalimar and later decided to pursue his solo career at this point. Sidney Justin replaced him for the group's 1987 album, Circumstantial Evidence, in the 1990 release, Wake Up, which turned out to be their final albums before disbanding. Meanwhile, Jody was making waves with her own solo career. She dropped her self-titled debut album in 1987, featuring the hit singles Looking for a New Love, which peaked at number two on the Hot 100 chart and topped the dance and R&B charts. The following year, she won a Grammy Award for Best New Artist. Over the years, Jody has released more than a dozen studio albums and EPs. Howard also found success in his solo career in the late 80s and 90s, with several top 10 R&B hits and numerous solo albums. In 1996, Jody, Howard, and Jeffrey reunited, in a way, for Babyface's hit single, This Is For The Lover In You, which was a cover of the hit single from Shalimar's fourth album, Three For Love. The music video featured the three former members digitally reunited on screen, and they later performed together on Top of the Pops. It appears that the relationship between the former colleagues had improved since around the same time, Jody, Howard, and Jeffrey reunited in the studio to collaborate on the song for Jody's upcoming album. However, the song did not make it to the album. Jody has acknowledged the collaboration, but Howard and Jeffrey have not, and they still appear to maintain the narrative of unresolved conflicts. In 1999, Howard and Jeffrey officially reunited to form Shalimar again, and a couple of years later, they added Carolyn Griffey, who was a close friend of the band and the daughter of Dick Griffey. This new lineup of Shalimar has been together since then, and they continue to tour and promote the band. In 1987, Jody refused to discuss Shalimar during an interview with the LA Times. However, since then has decided to open up about her experiences with the group after watching their Unsung episode in 2009. 
Jody created a series of YouTube videos titled Unsung Shalimar, Jody Watley Unfiltered to clarify some inaccuracies presented in the show. Although the videos have been removed since 2015, Jody spoke with iloveoldschoolmusic.com and revealed some of the challenging and tense moments that occurred within the group. For instance, Jody disclosed how Dick created division among the members by favoring Howard over the rest. She also discussed the physical and verbal abuse she experienced while dating Jeffrey, who later started dating and marrying Stephanie Mills. While this wasn't an issue, he went out of his way to rub the relationship in her face, which resulted in backstage fights. In addition, in 2014, Jody made an announcement that she had become the legal and registered trademark owner of Shalimar as of May of that year. She felt compelled to pursue ownership after Howard and Jeffrey revived the group with Carolyn while using Jody's image on promotional materials. She since encouraged fans to check out Shalimar Reloaded, which included herself and two other new members. We know what you're thinking. This means that there are now two separate groups using the same name, each featuring members from the classic Shalimar lineup. Following Jody's statement, Dick Griffey's wife Carrie responded on her Facebook page about a week later, stating that, over the last 35 years, Dick never forfeited his ownership of Shalimar and monitored its use with goodwill, including placing our daughter Carolyn at Shalimar's helm and performing for the last 15 years in Shalimar. Although failing health began to lessen his involvement, Dick maintained mentoring of Shalimar until his death in September of 2010. There is no moral credit or right to recent filings of so-called ownership of Shalimar, as it has already been purchased and administered by Dick Griffey since 1977. Her final statement declared that she and her family will continue to fight for their rightful legacy. This can be seen as a final declaration made on September 6, 2016. In response to this, Jody posted a lengthy open letter on her website. The letter began with, My hope is that after this lengthy post, all of you who need to move on can move on instead of telling me to when I have moved on. My life as well as my solo career represents what I've said for decades. I'm thankful for the lessons learned and experience of my brief tenure in Shalimar. I've never been angry, resentful, or any number of things I'm accused of. I thank all of them for their actions because ultimately, it led me to live my best life and step into my destiny as a successful solo artist. People have tried to manufacture fake narratives, drama, and imaginary beefs where none exists beyond their own egos, mind, and self-projection. For some, none of these facts will mean anything and you'll still think what you want. That's fine too. This post is also for me though, as I needed to get this off my chest and put these facts out here. She presented an abundance of evidence on various social media platforms, such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even shared emails. This outpouring of words, reminiscent of her previous response to the Shalimar Unsung episode, was likely triggered by the recent airing of an Unsung episode dedicated to Howard Hewitt which prompted her to write another lengthy statement. Currently, Carolyn Griffey and Carrie Lucas own the Shalimar licensing rights in all 28 European countries, although Carolyn previously challenged Jody's trademark in the US. Despite this, Jody still owns the Shalimar trademark in the US. Meanwhile, Howard, Jeffrey, and Carolyn plan to tour Europe in 2023 for the Friends 40th anniversary tour. Jody, on the other hand, seems to have moved on from Shalimar Reloaded and is focusing on her solo career. Although her fans will have to wait a while for her return to the stage, she is taking a well-deserved break this year. All in all, Shalimar's formation and success were a product of fate, hard work, and a little controversy. Their unique blend of disco, R&B, and pop music garnered them success and a dedicated fan base, but their internal conflicts and issues with their record label ultimately caused their downfall. However, their music continues to inspire and entertain fans worldwide, and former members continue to perform and create music. As we wrap up our exploration of Shalimar's history, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more exciting videos on artists, musicians, and other celebrities.